Hey everybody, Aaron at Warmoth here, and today I'm going to talk about installing strap buttons. Installing strap buttons is about one of the easiest things you can do when you're building a guitar, but there are a few little tricks that I've learned over the years that make it easier and have a, a better end result, so I'm going to hopefully pass some of those along to you. The first thing is uh, I usually like to install the strap button on the upper horn so that it has a slightly downward angle. I don't like it coming straight off that horn. I like it coming straight down. And if it's like a tele replacement body, uh, same deal. I mean, it's not going to be as far out, but you know, wherever that curve comes around, I'd like to get it on the kind of the underside of that curve so that it's pointed down just a little bit. I think that helps the strap have a better purchase on the the button so that it's less likely to slip off. And I think it also helps to pull the guitar slightly in that position so that it's less prone to be neck heavy. Also, because I like to um, have them at a downward angle, it's very important that you install the strap button before you install the neck. A lot of people save strap buttons till the very end because they're kind of an adornment and you don't need them until everything else is put together. But for me, strap buttons are the first thing that I put on because if you're gonna try and get that angle with the neck on, then you're gonna bring your drill in here and it's hard, the neck gets in the way of that drill getting at the angle that you want. Um, and the other thing is I use strap buttons to catch the guitar all the time. Like when, when I'm holding a guitar and moving it around, I just naturally grab the body and I let it fall to those strap buttons. And that's a, you know, I, that's where I catch it at. If I'm handling a body that is put together, but doesn't have strap buttons, it's like a greased watermelon. I can, I can never feel like I've got a secure hold of it. So um, that's, those are two good reasons for putting the strap buttons on first. Now here's this body that I have loose um, at home. And by the way, a lot of people have asked what color this is. This is turquoise dye, which is my favorite blue dye that we offer. We offer aquamarine dye and blue dye, but turquoise is the money shot for me. And I've even have some, had some people ask if they could buy it. And my answer is no. If you want one, get your own. This one's mine. Anyway. Uh, this doesn't have strap buttons on it currently, but you can see that I've already drilled for them. Um, when I, when I go to build this up, putting the strap buttons on will be the first thing that I do. And what I usually do to locate this one, first of all, I put a, a piece of tape across the end of the guitar. And then usually if, if it's a transparent finish, you can find the center line. And I just tape a string up here and I run a string right down that center line. And then I run it right over the edge. And because I have a piece of masking tape there, I can run it right over the edge and mark that center line on the end. Sometimes you can even see the center line on the end piece. Now, if you have a guitar that's got a solid finish on it, it might not be so easy to see. Um, but you can usually, you know, tape a string and kind of run it down and just kind of eyeball it. If you want, you can even measure along the bridge or along the pickups and find the center point. But you, you basically just need to find that center point and that's where it's going to be located this way. And then a lot of times I will measure the thickness of the body and find the center point this way. But it's not like crazy critical. As long as you're getting it pretty close, you're going to be fine. Um, for this one, I usually, uh, you know, I like to have it angled down. And I, so I find the center point this way by measuring and finding the center point. And then I, I just kind of eyeball it. So when it comes to actually drilling the pilot holes, there are a few things you need to know. So here's kind of a, just a generic strap button and the, and the screw. The first thing I do is I just measure the outer diameter of those threads. And whatever that measurement is, I know that the pilot hole must be smaller than that. Then I use the, the tip of my uh, calipers to measure the inner diameter of this screw inside the threads, the, the shaft that goes down inside the threads. And that's the ideal size for the pilot hole. So I get the closest drill bit that I have to that dimension um, that is smaller than the outer diameter. And that's what I use to drill the pilot hole for this. And then the other thing that I do is measure this distance, the depth that the screw is gonna go into the body. 
and I put my drill bit along that distance and then I put a piece of masking tape right there so that when I'm drilling this I know exactly how deep I need to drill to accommodate the screw. Now when you do that, it's a good trick that a lot of people do, but when you do that and you have masking tape on your bit, as you plunge the bit into the wood, you want to go almost to the masking tape, but you don't want to go to the masking tape. And the reason why, especially when you're drilling multiple holes, like for um, when you're installing tuners, is because if you go all the way down and touch that masking tape, there's a chance that you could push it just a little bit, and then you bring it out, you drill your next one all the way down, and you push it just a little bit more, and you pull it out, and after you've drilled several holes, you know, that masking tape is creeping up, 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 up the bit, and pretty soon it's a quarter inch past where it's supposed to be, and boink, you drill right through your headstock or whatever. When you're drilling, um, drilling pilot holes for uh, strap buttons, it's not that big of a deal, but when you're drilling pilot holes for tuners, it is a big deal. And then once you have those holes drilled, before you drive a screw in it, you want to chamfer that uh, edge so that when you drive a screw into it, you don't chip the paint. Um, and I don't have, these ones aren't chamfered and you can see that I have indeed chipped the paint. Um, uh, I don't have a chamfer bit. I don't have a, a chamfer to show you, but you can Google it and, um, and find out what I'm talking about. Basically, you're just going to put a tapered edge at the top of that hole that brings the paint back a little bit. So when you drive the screw in, you don't chip that paint and send a crack spider webbing out from that. So once you've done that, then it's time to actually drive the screws. Um, and you're going to want to coat them with uh, beeswax or paraffin or you know maybe even a little bit of candle wax and that will lubricate the screws and make them easier to drive in. And then I like to use a felt washer. I don't know if you can see that but there's a white felt washer right there in between the, the um, strap button and the body. I just think it gives it a finished look. And there is one other thing you need to think about when you're installing strap buttons and that is how the guitar balances. Um, on bodies that don't have a long upper horn, you always run the risk that the guitar is going to be neck heavy. Um, uh, one, you know, one example is like a Nomad body. Um, and by the way, this is a discontinued shape. You can't get this anymore, but the Nomad body that we currently sell is very close. Um, if you put the strap button right there, this guitar will be neck heavy and it will tip. So what I do is put it right there, I take one of the screws um, that it attaches the neck and I put it right there. And when you do that, it changes uh, how it balances and it balances just like you want it to in playing position. Now there are a lot of things you need to be careful about when you do that. This is our contoured heel option. So it gets thin down here and I'm using, uh, normally I would use our contoured uh, heel screw set where you have too long and too short. But what I've done here is use two long, one short, and another long here to um, accommodate that uh, strap button and still go into the neck to attach the neck. But you have to pay attention to what you're doing. You have to measure everything first and make sure that you have your dimensions correct because you do not want that screw coming out uh, the fretboard that would really ruin your day. Um, and you might also be wondering if this is going to affect stability of the neck or anything like that. I can tell you that I have played the snot out of this guitar for eight years with the um, strap button there and I've had no trouble at all. And uh, I use this guitar obviously in my Scorpions Tribute and that is not a band where we stand around behind our microphones. We are jumping around and running around and acting bonkers in that band. Um, throwing the guitars over our heads and holding them up and shaking them and doing all kinds of stuff. And I've never had a problem with that. So um, that's my experience with it. So hopefully you found all that information useful. Um, those are my experiences and tips installing strap buttons. If you have any of your own or you have additional questions, make sure and put all that stuff in the comments. And until next time, wash your hands, be kind, and keep on picking.